Good evening, dear viewers. Welcome to Church of Uganda Family TV. My name is Apollo Sabiti. My friends call me Bito, and it's a pleasure for us to have you uh, tune in this evening. Uh, thank you for joining Ask the CEO program that happens here every Thursday, 8 to 9 p.m. And we believe this is going to be another beautiful show. Now, with me here this evening is a very fine gentleman. His reputation precedes him, very hands-on. He's gone out of his way to do things that some people thought were unachievable. We're privileged to share in his space this evening. And uh, may I also remind you that uh, this Ask the CEO, in case you're a first-time viewer, uh, it happens every Thursday, like I said, 8 to 9 p.m. here on Church of Uganda Family TV. And what we're looking for uh, is something that will trigger your mind to become the next version of yourself, which is why we have top executives, top managers here in the capital and even across the borders to speak to us, the youth, to instill the perspective of being a winner, not settling for less. And these are people whose stories exhibit a smooth curve, well, not so smooth per se, but it's a, per se, a consistent curve of thriving to be better every day. And we believe you will have something to learn from them. His name is... Uh, My name is Warren at Nightwear. Uh, thank you, Apollo. Um, glad to be here uh, this evening. Pleasure. And uh, uh, I, I am a married man. Uh, my wife should be viewing and the children. My wife, Viola. Uh, we have two boys and one girl, um, Timothy, um, Nathaniel, and Tabitha. Beautiful. Um, uh, I am uh, I'm past the youth age, but uh, not very far. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, growing up, the youthful time taught me quite a lot. I am uh, a graduate of Cambridge University. I have a PhD in plant sciences. I specialize in uh, plant viruses. Um, then I'm a farmer. I, I prefer to be called oh, a farmer. Oh yeah, I know that about you. Yes. Beautiful. So uh, if you are just joining in, again, this is Warren. I'm telling you, a graduate of Cambridge, I am seated in the presence of greatness. Tell us about your story, Warren. More than meets the eye, uh, where like they ask, where does your story begin? Oh yes, my story began very many years ago. I was born in 1980, so you can guess my age. I don't have to speak it out. I am precisely getting to 42 years. Yeah, sure. uh, born in uh, the, the rural uh, southwestern Uganda, on a farm. That's why I prefer to be called, to be known as a farmer. Uh, born to a single mother, uh, who raised me single-handedly uh, with the help of very many people and because you know the African setting. And uh, that, the early years taught me quite a lot. It taught me uh, to be fast, humble as a child because mm -hmm. they say charity begins from home. Yeah. And uh, humbleness brings, begins from home. You won't get it from any school. Absolutely. And, uh, Growing up during that time, 1980 was a volatile year, a time of war, uh, so many things happening, but mm. my mom persevered and, and raised me to a man that you see today. I grew up farming, I grew up interacting with the rest of the community, so perhaps as we move into the discussion, you will learn more about my attitudes, more about my humility, more about my hard work, and uh, more about uh, uh, the achievements that I have today. They begin uh, in the early, between 1980 and 1990. That's, that's, that's a beautiful story. Yep. And uh, which brings us to what we'll be focusing on today. Uh, his story, Warren's story, in relation to commitment, resilience, you know, daring, going all out to dream, and godliness, but also in the closing stages, we'll be looking at his view about the transformation of Africa 
And in that, what actually is the role of the youth in this? So we'll be uh, riding along uh, that punchline, uh, your story. So we, we, we will not have a lot of interruptions going forward. We'll let uh, the story you know, unfold and uh, I will be picking up as and when uh, it is necessary. I wouldn't want to interrupt. Fine gentleman here raised by a single mother grows to become a graduate of Cambridge. I should also add, when you look at his size, sure enough you know he's one who gives tithe. Mr. Warren, shall we please proceed? Yes. Um, I pick it up from uh, where you just uh, ended. A uh, fine man you see today, it's a long story. You can imagine Ray being raised by a single mom, uh, not educated. Actually, my mom conceived me when she was in her S2, and she had to drop out of school. And um, it was, I wasn't able to, you know, to conceptualize what happened at that time, but I can imagine she had to go through hell. Uh, but um, uh, moving forward, I think when God has, you know, like the Bible says, mm. he knows the beginning, he knows the end from the beginning. Oh, yes. And uh, he takes you to the end, then brings you back to the beginning yeah. and walks with you step by step. Um, you know, the 1990s was quite a traumatizing period. Um, a lot of wars. Uh, you, can, you can imagine 1990 to 1991, famine also had to set in. Yeah. Um, there was nothing much happening in the community, but we persevered through mm -hmm. that time. And one thing that uh, held me uh, in the socket, if I may say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> without blackout, yeah, sure. is uh, my mom, is the message still echoes. Uh, unfortunately, she passed on in 2014. Bless her my, soul. Yes, bless her soul. Uh, she always reminded me that the future is going to be bright. Wow. You can imagine an S2 dropout. I would get out of my sockets, you know, when you're raised by a single mom, you're actually in a home that is not supposed to be your home. Yeah. I grew up at my mother's place. And, and my parents, my father's home, actually, my, they were quite well off, if I may say. 1980, my, my dad then was a policeman here in the city. Oh, that a graduate, that. You know, graduate of senior six. You can imagine. I must have been a high-profile man, sure, that, 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 that but you managed. know, whenever you have struggles, like I had struggles at my mom's place, mm. uh, you know, you know how boys, you, you you want to move out, you want to try out things, Explo to uh, explore. explore, you know, you 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 want to be um, to be seen, yeah. you know, when things happen, you're like you want to show them. Yeah. Then my mom would remind me that. Where you want to go? Sometimes I would say, take me to my father's place. Say, where you want to go, you do not know them. You've not grown there. This is what you know. And that has also stuck with me. Mm. You must start from what you know mm. for you to achieve or to maneuver the unknowns. Absolutely. It was a message that was uh, ingrained on my DNA mm -hmm. at a very tender age. Mm. And uh, that would comfort me, that would console me, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're out of, of your mood. And whenever she would say that, I would say, oh, I need to get back to the line. I started from uh, a church school. I was coming to that. Yes. I sure was I started from to a church school, Mutojo Primary School. It's a church school. Uh, I did not get to speak English until I get to Kigeze High School. I'll get to that. Oh. Beautiful school that, uh, you know, is, is yes. doing some celebrations around. Yes, a hundred years, centenary years. years. Yeah. Um, um, then, you know, primary school from a church school. I finished P7 1994. I was so little, I was very short. And my mom had no money, but she had to find a way of telling me, you have to repeat this class because you're so tall, too little. But the, the, the message for the re repeating, repeating P7 was yeah. that 
she did not see any source of money. So I repeated P7, even when I had better grades. In, in faith that once the 12, extra 12 months are done, yes. you would be, somehow God would have created a way. Exactly. I mean, well, she wasn't born again, but I mean, she kept telling me, I am not born again, but uh, I live like born again, <laughs> and I know you have heard that very many times. Wow. Um, after the, after I, I, I repeated P7, 1995, I joined a secondary school in Barara, not a high-end school, I did mm. not go... I did not have a chance to go to Italian school uh, or yeah. Barara High School of the uh, days. Yeah. So I went to Bujaga Senior Secondary School. Mm. It's on uh, the Kavare Highway okay. when you reach uh, the Nija, the famous Nija, uh, where are those big hams. And some nice tomatoes. Exactly, yeah. that's where my school was. And I say was because it has since changed names. Oh. So it no longer exists, you might not find my school, <laughs> uh, because it's now called Latch High School. But let me tell you, the formative years, I call those formative years up to 14 years, they engraved a lot into me. It wasn't a very good school. I wasn't neither a bright student, but I had learned to work hard. Then you, as you can imagine, when you grow up in poverty, your health is not that very good, yeah. you are in and out of school, you've not paid fees. But interestingly, whenever I would return to school, I would excel. Uh, my, my hobbies can testify to that. I, I, I would be the first or the second, and people would wonder, this kid is rarely in school, but when he returns, things happen. He's turning tables. Yes. But I would attribute that to the grace of God, even when I wasn't born again. I went through uh, O-level. I completed quite well. I was very good in sciences. Uh, my parents had a lot of hopes, even when they did not know medical school exists. They would admire doctors. <laughs> <laughs> like many parents do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my mom, I, I used to, whenever I would check into her records, she was, she knew quite a lot about the environment and geography, that was her favorite, but she admired doctors, so they would tell me, oh, when you grow up, probably be a doctor and save our lives. So when I finished S4, uh, thank God for, for, for gracious people, if mm. I may term it. Mm. Uh, and not all relatives actually are very gracious, but I had my uncle mm. who had studied at Kikese High School mm. and was a teacher. Mm. Uh, his name is Raymond. He's into communication now. He works in Tanzania. Okay. And um, he's like, the way this child is progressing is quite brilliant. I think he would do quite well at Kikese High School. Wow. Um, I had not filled a choice at Kigeza High School. I was interested in Ndare School. Oh. And, uh, and of uh, course, being close to Mara. Of course, of course. We, we used to interact with each other, you know, you know, seminars. I was good in mathematics. Mm. And, and actually, I would floor them. I mm. would go to seminars, and, and they wouldn't imagine this child, child from, uh, from, Bujaga? from Bujaga High School, which is now Lach High School, uh, could do quite well. Uh, he went to Kigeza High School because I was actually told that I was given a place at Ntare School. But when he reached there, the fees yeah. were off the, the, off the limit. Were, yeah. The dues were off the limit. Mm. And he's like, hmm, Kigeza High School would be a better place because I am an OB there. I know the and headmaster the then. Uh, the headmaster then was uh, Henry Chuliaji, yeah, and uh, oh. yeah, he's still he's still in mentoring many youth. Absolutely. Yes, and um, he straight away went to get the high school, but I had conditions, and that brings me to another point mm -hmm. to the youth. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you want in life. Mm -hmm. It is very important to know what you want in life. I wanted to go to Ntare school because then was doing quite well, was sending many students to medical school. Yes. So I knew it was 
I, I knew my capacity. It was it was almost a sure way. A sure way of getting to medical school. Yeah. And then medical schools were not very many. Absolutely. Um, that is I uh, two thousand. Mm. Uh, I completed a six the in two thousand. Yeah. Yes. And there were only two medical school. Um, You're talking Mulago and and, and Barara and University. University. And then I said, if I fail to go to Mbarara High to to. Ntare High School, Ntare, 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 school, Ntare school, then my second option would be Kigezi High School. But if I go to Kigezi High School, I also want to pursue PCB, that is Physics, Chemistry, Chemistry Biology. Biology. And when my uncle went to Kigezi High School, unfortunately they gave him PCM. So they dropped the math. The, 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 biology. the biology. And Gizzi High School then was also very good at yes. sending students to medical school. Yes. And at that age, you know there's a lot of information today, but I feel frustrated when I meet youth and they do not know what they want in life. With this abundance of information, mm -hmm. we are in the information age, but they're not willing to explore. As a matter of fact, in 2007, the computer was voted as the person of the year because yes. information yes. that was previously available to millionaires yes. is now available. Yes. There was no Facebook. <laughs> People who had phones they were this big. And uh, we, would to, we, we used to respect them quite well. They would be very rich people. I hear you. But at that point in time, I had the information. So career guidance then, I think, was, was stronger mm -hmm. than probably it is today. I have met even people who have finished S6 and you ask them what you want to do in life. They're not sure. They're not, they not sure what they want to be. But I was sure at S4, if I go to Ontario school, I pursue my medical f career mm. from there. If I go to Kigeli's high school, I'll s stick to my guns and say, I need PCB. They had given me PCM. When my dad returned, when my uncle returned home, I said, no, I can't go to Kigezi High School on this combination because they had given me PCL. And he said, don't worry. I think he knew being an OB of the school. Yeah. I remember, I reported late. Yeah. My, my friends would testify. I went to Kigezi High School with Dr. Gaba. And uh, uh, Dr. Gaba is, is one of the famous uh, epidemiologists. He, in, in, in Jinja. I studied with Dr. Nguchile. I studied Timothy? With, yes. Oh, I was in the you. same class with Dr. Pius. Yeah, I know you know Pius quite well. Doctor. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. And I reported late. They would say, testify because we did not have the money. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure that I was going to report to school. But when we reached there, we went to the HMO's office and uh, I spoke to him myself. And I said, I need PC. So he was a very liberal man. Yes, you know, he yes, believed yes, in yes, students. Yes, yes. And he said, if you sure you want that, give it a shot. Why not? And and it happened there and then. And uh, my time at Kigezi High School, it was tough. Coming from a lower end school, I found them Pora Raymond. It was a tough. <laughs> you know, it, it, did you go to Kigezi High School? I did. Oh, I was. It was tough Kigezi because Kigezi school, then, yeah. then there was a culture. Yeah. Kigezi High School would encourage most of its uh, all level. Yes. To to join the to join to come back for, for HSC. Yes. So. 80% of them are from the guest car. So the way they board, the way they oh, board, it's just Lord. seamless. It's seamless. They know each other. I, we struggled. <laughs> I would testify. It was a struggle. But we never gave up. It's another That's story true. of my resilience. We never gave up. Mm. There are these chaps, even when we are from an out, we are, you are an outsider. The big proportion of outsiders were from Tare school. And you know, you sometimes you can feel that inferiority complex, absolutely, and also knowing your background. But mm. my mom had taught me at mm. another stage that the future is going to be bright. So I had this, you know, motivation. Yeah. And no one would pull me back. Um, I've I've told you we first had time at Kigeza High School. The mm. first time, the first time at Kigeza High School, having reported late, it was hard. I can't explain it. 
recently I was had a chat with a girl and we were like, oh, it was the toughest time of our lives. But it wow. shaped our career. Yeah. You know, Kigezi High School is so grounded, you know, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it looks at a chap at an angle, 360, socially, spiritually, oh, yes. oh, career-wise, yes. uh, sense of community, yeah. uh, sense of responsibility I knew then, yeah. the policy was, if you want to go to town, put in a uniform, walk through the gate, go to Kavari town. You don't need a permission. Back then, I believe it was a small town. In yes, it was a very small town. And, and, and I think then the school was teaching us to be responsible, yeah. to be responsible citizens. And like I said, you would put on a uniform, move to town, and come back. Nobody would question you. Where are you coming from? Because you're in a uniform. Yeah. So we became responsible citizens in Kigaisi High School. Now, when I reached there, the competition was too well, steep for me. Extreme. But I can tell you we measured up. By the end of, I, I, I had a goal. So when I reached there, there was this bursary. I know you, you know yeah, the bursary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wasn't the brightest of the students, but I, every evening, I would go to chapel to pray that I get a bursary. But I would not stop there. We had a group of... You had to put in the yes, work. Yes, yes. We had a working group, if I may say, if yeah. you go to the corporate world now. Yeah, working. working group yeah. in, and that teaches teamwork as well, yeah. which you need for you to thrive. Yeah. Uh, I know we're about five of us, you know, Dr. Gaba, I have mentioned it. Uh, Aber is soon completing his PhD as well. Mm. Uh, he works in, with Naro Katrekano. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, yes, I mean. and uh, we we teamed up. Much as we would go to chapel every evening, yeah, would read so hard, would wake up. I, I I usually tell people that then I think the climate was was still okay. It was better. Mm. To be in the reading room at 3 a.m. than being in your bed. Because Kavari is very cold. <laughs> so we utilized that. <laughs> or read so hard. Mm. I can assure you by the end of S5, I was the best student in class. Wow. And having, you know, that mediocre background, nobody got to know it. And I think until today, it might be a Gaba and probably the viewers right who, now. Who, who, who know? Yes, that I was actually on a bursary at Kigesi High School. But it's, it's attributed to hard work and knowing what you want yeah. and knowing your history. Yeah. I, I think it's, you know, in, in recent years, people tend to forget where they're coming from. And it's a big mistake. If you forget that at home you do not have a mattress, and just because you've made some bit of money and you buy a mattress, mm. then you feel like you, you're born in upscale Kampala. Yeah. Then you've lost you've arrived. it. You've lost it, actually. You think you've, you arrived. Think you've arrived, yeah. but you have you lost, lost it. it. I kept reflecting back. My background is poor. My mom, she's, she's not capable. So I was like, I need to measure up. I need to, get, I need to take home this bursary. Yeah. And I won it. I remember... Uh, our class teacher then, um, Mr. Nezehorst, may, may, may so rest in eternal peace. He oh, passed on. Oh. Nezehorst. Mathematics? Passed. Yes, and physics. Very little. Yes, was from Chisoro. Yeah. And I remember inviting the cream of the class, those who knew it, the Kigazi, the Kigazi High School club, those who knew they knew their physics, he invited them at his home and he's like, you know, you have to up your game. They are newcomers and they will give you a run for your money. Because we were doing quite well. I remember, I remember in physics... This is in, interesting. Yes, in physics, I got a 95. And I think the second one probably had a 72. And it wasn't me. It's that hard work. Yeah. And that has followed me, by the way, as you will get to know um, where I am today. Uh, to cut the Kigezi High School story really short, short. Yeah. Uh, I passed, many people knew I would go to medical school, but at that point in time, filling job forms, like I have told you, I knew what I wanted. Mm. So you need to have options in life. Yeah. 
you have to have priorities. Yeah. If you want to be an IT expert, ask yourself, that, ask, what if I fail? Yeah. Where else do I go? What you is need to, my landing? What, what is that other landing? Spot? Yes, you need alternatives. Mm. You need alternatives. And when you know your history, you don't need one alternative. Mm. So if this route is closed, and this one is closed, what are other options? I remember when I was completing my job forms, we were doing quite well actually. Uh, because being mediocre, you know, we reached a point in time, uh, Mr. Bakewa, who retired, the chemistry BK? teacher, BK. Oh, yes. Who would us actually, we were backbenchers, but he brought us up front, would sit in front, and because we were, he looked at us as, you know, very promising uh, students. Yeah. And I did not excel as expected. But at filling job forms, like I said, I had very many options. Actually, when I feel, I, I feel medical school, Mbarara, not Makerele. Okay. Then people who looked at my job forms like, no. What's, what's, what exactly no, is going on here? You should be having, you know, medicine Mbarara, medicine Makerele, and probably some engineering in Makerele. I said, no, because I did medicine in Mbarara University. And the second choice at Makere University was a Greek agriculture. Mm. And, and I think that must have been godly. That's why I prefer to be known as a farmer. I'm going to request you, uh, Warren, to mm. pause a little bit. Yes. You're throwing everything in the air. Yeah. Uh, we'll stop at your aspiration to join the Ivory Tower. Yes. And we'll return after the break. Thank you. As you think about the Lord just taking over your case and you are no longer in the midst of it, and He says, Fear not. Demons from the mountains, scream, scream and leave. In the name of Demons the from, the, from the graves, scream in and leave. In the name, in the name of Jesus. Do you know that you can now enjoy great enriching shows anywhere through the Family TV app? Here is how to download it. Open Play Store on your phone. Search for the Family TV app. Click Install. After installing it, open it and enjoy enriching content anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Family TV, enriching lives. With 200 million people aged between 15 and 24, Africa has the youngest population in the world. This can either be an opportunity or a ticking time bomb. At Young and Flourishing Hub, we seek to turn these numbers into an opportunity for Africa to become a global leader. Join us every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. only on Church of Uganda Family TV as we take you through the discussion of different topics that will enable you to become world-class leaders and mentors, grow your finances, and become world-class innovators. Young and Flourishing, Transforming Africa. Welcome back uh, from that short break and thank you so much for sticking by. This is Church of Uganda Family TV and this is Ask the CEO that happens every Thursday 8 to 9 p.m. in case you're just joining us here. Now, before we went for the break, we uh, were touching base with uh, Buana uh, Warren and uh, he took us through his story raised by a single mother against all odds and is now flooring people at HSC level. His aspiration next up is the Ivory Tower, Makerere University. Tell us, yes. pick it up from there, tell us what happens after there, even as we try to, you know, uh, try to 
get towards the close. Yes, uh, thank you much, very much, Apo. Um, my journey to, to the Ivory Tower wasn't uh, a smooth one. First of all, it was my very first time in 20 years to come to Kampala. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly speaking, I didn't know where the bus park was, I didn't know where my career was, and uh, coming to pick my admission was, was one of the most you know, risky thing that I did in life. And uh, I remember somebody meeting me in the, in the bus park and uh, uh, taking me to the folk art of agriculture. Mm -hmm. I got my second choice. My parents will tried all ways to take me to, there was a, a scholarship to go to Tunisia. Uh, my uncle tried to, to, to entice me to that, to go to medical school. You know, parents usually have aspirations yes. because they know they know where you're coming from, and they yeah. knew yeah. they knew actually I wanted to be a medical doctor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then they said, "Oh, if if that fails, we'll try the University of Dar es Salaam." And 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 I came to Minister of Education actually to you know to to, to to do interviews to go to Tunisia. But I told him, I think it was God's will. Mm. I knew where I failed. I actually, I got I got a a B in, 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 an A in chemistry actually, uh, a B in biology, but I, I failed physics and it was the first time to fail physics and I failed a practical one. So after completing a practical exam, I knew I have failed physics. So I got, you know, as how, you can imagine. How, how do you pick yourself up uh, when, when, when life has thrown this rough patch at you? I think the starting point is going back to, you go back to the drawing board. Mm. Uh, what was my strategy? Mm. What plan did I have? Mm. It wasn't written then, but I had it. Uh, it's like, yeah, your plan was, if you fail medical school, try second, the second alternative. So you did PCB agriculture? No, fine art. Oh, you did PCB? I did PCB fine art. So when I failed to go to medical school, actually I told my parents, it's God's will, because I was sober, I wasn't sick, I had revised, it was God's will that I go to the folk art of agriculture to Macquarie University, mm. and I settled for that. And coming to Ivory, to Ivory Tower, it was also a nightmare, you know, first time in Kampala, first time in the University of 30,000 people. The journey itself from, uh, yeah. from, from, from back home yes. to here. Yes, it was, it was intense, very intense. But I maneuvered. Yeah. I, was, I was told to fight. Hmm? Fight. My mother would tell me, fight on. The future is bright. And that's what I held on. You need to have a word to, to hold on to. You need to have a word. Yes. I have something that you can hold on to. You're youthful. You know, what is that thing that you're holding on to? Some of, today when you talk to the youth, sometimes it's hard to know where they belong. Yeah. But I am, I'm, I'm glad I knew where I belonged. I went to the folk art of agriculture. Actually, I missed first class by just points. Uh, four years down the road, uh, that's when I met wonderful people, that's why I met Kaimas, uh, that's why I met actually uh, the CEO of, uh, of Ridgeline. Uh, oh, yes. And young and Virgin. Yes, and Young and Virgin, the CEO asked the CEO, the, the man behind the program as well. Absol absolutely. Yes. Google, Sabit, Habit, shout yes. to you. Thank yes. you so much. That's when you. I met, you know, those people, I, we never went to the same school, but, you know, through uh, spiritual, s through fellowships, yeah. then we met through Kaim. And Kaim grounded me so well. It nurtured me into a person that I am today. St. Francis gave us a platform. You know, walking through 2,000 people, ushering them to Holy Communion, it's not a mean thing to do. Yeah. And that gave us confidence yeah. that you can never yeah. imagine. Yeah. And my thanks to Uncle Ben gave us opportunity to explore, to explore ministry, and I grew strong. That's the Reverend Ben Mugabe. Yeah, retired. Um, I finished Makere University hmm. uh, quite well. Most of my classmates. Which year was this? I, 2000, 
2005. I don't know which class you were then. <laughs> let's let's let's, let's, let's walk. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yes, 2005. Yeah. Uh, then I have to mention it's at Macquarie University that I met my life partner. That is, uh, God bless Viola uh, Nimsima. I met her in, in St. Francis and we have done many things together. At church? Yes. So you and were busy working for were the church? We were all ushers. We were all ushers. And I met my wife today. And we have done so much together. Finished campus. Uh, there were no jobs then, you know, I meet people today say, oh, maybe your time, jobs were all over the place. No, no, I remember there's a time I walked from Sir Apple Road. Sir Apple, you know, just, had, be, just, just below my case. Yes, up to Zambia to drop my application letter. And I walked back because all I had is money to print. But finally, to cut my job hunting short, yeah. I get a job you can never imagine in rural Uganda, in Rukunjiri, as an agriculture officer. And, and I obeyed. And you're off the streets? Yes, off the streets. No, that's when I started earning. And there I want to, make, to, to, to encourage the youth. Mm. And this is what you should take home with. You must give up what you're holding on today for you to receive something bigger. I, I, I gave up my good life in Kampala. You know, I had arrived in Kampala. Many people want to come here and want to remain here. People are like, what are you going to do in Urukunjiri? You come from the village, you got a chance to come to the city. Now you want to go back. No, you must give away what you have for you to receive something bigger. Mm. And I gave up my lifestyle here. Walked to Urukunjiri, did not know anyone. I started work. That's where my professional life started. I worked there for about five years. Mm. Later, uh, I applied for a master's degree. Uh, here it was a sandwich program. I came back to Macquarie University, excelled. In my second year, I got an opportunity to go to the US to finish up my master's. I went to Ohio State. You, can you imagine somebody from a church school to Ohio State? It's one of the bigger universities in the US. Yeah. Uh, studied uh, plant science as well. I did uh, plant pathology, completed. I also gave, gave up that life. Remember, I had to resign my job oh, oh yes. for oh me yes. to travel to the US. You know, things that entice people today, things people don't want to give up. Health insurance. You have health insurance you, want, you don't want to give away. I gave up all that. You have a job. Then our salary was 530 mm -hmm. as, a, as a starting salary. When they remove taxes, you remain with 460 there. I had to give away all that, give up all that, travel to the US. Reached there, completed my master's. A place of unknown, it's like an unknown land. It, it, when you reach there, you are, they say you have arrived. All your dreams will have met, you have met them. <laughs> and um, after my master's, that is 2011, because I had just gotten married, we had a baby, I had left my wife here mm -hmm. with a baby. I said, I am going back to Uganda. My supervisor then, a professor, looked at me and said, are you insane? This can't be. Many people who come from Africa want to remain here. I, I said, stay. no, I can't stay. I am going back. Mm. And I packed my bags. She did not believe it until a Thursday when I was leaving on a Saturday. I went to her office and said, you know what, Professor Sale Miller? I am leaving for Uganda on Saturday. I said, okay, Warren, you can go back home. I returned here home, started again. You know, you have to start again. Start if you afresh. lose something, I had not lost something, but I gave it up. Mm -hmm. You must be ready to start again. And I came back here, no job, and I started afresh. Uh, thankfully, I got a job with an international research center mm -hmm. uh, here in Kawanda. I started work, uh, worked for another five years. And guess what? You know, because of what had been instilled in me by at home, you know, my mama telling me that it is going to be all right, you mm -hmm. have to excel in life, mm -hmm. uh, you have to start things, yes. you have to push yourself. Yes. I should say, the generation of go-getters. Yes. And that's where I belonged. Like, it is you, if you're to pass through that bush, 
It is you to make the first step. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I believe in. It's my working principle up to today. If I have to get to point X, I must start that journey myself. No matter what is standing before yes. you, if you know you have to flip through this yes. to get there, yes. you had no doubts about yes. it. And, and that's my professional life. Uh, you know, when I came back with the master's, got a good job, better pay, my salary actually was multiplied by about 10, 12 times. You know, you're receiving 450, now you start to take home uh, about 5 million, and you're like, oh God. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> no, no, the rewards are beginning. And to, they're beginning to come. They're sure. beginning to come. And uh, better insurance, you know, um, better privileges. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go to a field and you come home, back home with money. But five years later, I gave up that as well. I started the application process to go to Cambridge. And let nobody lie to you. Yeah. I know it happens. You know, people say, oh, somebody pushed you. No. I propelled myself to where I am today with the help of God, knowing that God is your father yes. and he owns cattle on a thousand hills. A thousand hills. That is enough. All the silver and the gold. Is his. All the beautiful places are his. And I applied to Cambridge because I had worked with somebody, a professor on a project I was supporting here in Uganda. And guess what? Somebody from a church school gets admitted to Mail Cambridge. drops in and yes. here we go again. Yes. You I, have, I have never been the same again. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I changed. Shall we sing a hallelujah? <laughs> Probably <laughs> later after the show. When wow. I got the admission to Cambridge. Must have been very humbling. It was humbling. I wished my mother was still alive. She had passed on in 2014, Sorry. and this was 2017. And I get yeah. this admission to the best university in the world. Then it was the second uh, after uh, Oxford, Oxford, and you know, where queens and kings are raised, yes, yes, are educated. Exactly. And guess what? I start a journey. I descend from my work, fly to Cambridge. On the next flight. Yes, I'm in Cambridge to do a PhD not anything else and i am in africa the program i went for takes only five people it takes only five people in the whole of africa and i was among the five people so as i speak from 2017 up to now there are about 20 people that have gone to cambridge and i am the only one that has come from uganda i don't come from a high-end family, I don't come from a ruling family, I come from a humble family, deep southwestern Uganda. Yeah. Probably somebody whom they know, you know how they call people who are born out of wedlock? Yeah. You know the word they usually yeah, use? Yeah, yeah. That word. And here you are, you are in Cambridge, 31 colleges, people from all over the world, and probably in my college were only three black students. I would go to a lecture theatre or a meeting, and among 300 people, you look at around and you're like, you're the only different person. It's the only place that I knew, I got to know that I am a black man. And I took it as a blessing. Because I, a blessing I didn't go to, I didn't go to Wudo. I, 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 so many people fancy, you know, I have, you know, international curriculum. I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> and here I am, went there. And to tell you the truth, my four years to Cambridge have been there at the top. I excelled. This, dear viewer, is not just from grass to grace. Yeah. It is from dry grass to sheer grace. Exactly. Seated at the top. Yes, at the top. Topmost top, at as a matter of fact. Yes, topmost. You know, people, you know, people started to recognize me, you know, people were like, hey, we had you at Cambridge. Oh, you must be a son of a queen. Of and a I think king. this is around the time when we add the title. Hello, doctor. Oh, yes. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I excelled, completed top of my class, actually. Wow. Uh, I, my, my, my professor's reports, Cambridge has a system. The moment you enter into the system, mm. they track you. Even where I am, I have exited the system. They still track me, my progress. They send me emails. I, I exited actually December last year. That's when I completed. But my reports are always showing excellent chap that we have worked with. And remember where you come. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, actually. Yeah. You can excel if you have 
the, the heart yeah. to persevere, yeah. to work hard, yeah. to, ha to have hope. Parents out there, you need to instill in your child children hope. And it is, I think it's the one word that is missing yeah. in the generation today. My mother, even when she wasn't educated, she would tell me the future is going to be better. And I can testify much better. I completed in December actually last year. The same day actually I defended my PhD is the same day I signed the contract to join the corporate world. I, as I speak now, I am actually supposed to be in Southeast Asia where I am in charge of uh, about uh, 10 countries in Southeast Asia. I work with an international research center um, and always my goal, I want to go back, my goal in life has been having come from a very poor background, I must support the poor to get out of poverty. And people ask me, why, why Southeast Asia? Why? When I was at Cambridge, my supervisor would ask me, what do you want to be? And I take him as my father. Yes. It's the same thing you should ask somebody that you're mentoring. Mm -hmm. What do you want to be in life? And I would tell him, my goal is to serve the grassroots. Using my expertise, I don't want to be in lecture rooms, yeah. lecturing people who actually at the end of the day will not practice what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. They'll go into business, they'll go into classics. I want to go down there where the poor person is, where the youth are, majority mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. and support them. And he asked me, where exactly I can be in, in, in Africa, Asia, or Latin America? That's where the poor are. Yeah. And guess what? God answers prayers. Oh yes, he did. I never got a job here on the continent, but I got a job in Southeast East Asia. Asia. But I'm in charge of Southeast Asia and Latin America. I serve as a technical expert on crop protection, helping farmers on the grassroots to produce better, to sell better, to store better, to get more money, so that they send the youth back to school and be able to manage that resource. So my job is about wealth creation and at the grassroots. Mm -hmm. And that's the message I need to have, for, I have for the youth, is be resilient, mm -hmm. work hard, and have a goal in life. So um, in South America, I support about 28 countries. My work was also spill over here in Africa. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's where I am today. This is, this, this. And before you, before you, I, I also, 2014, I and my wife started the farm, Busukuma Climate Farm, it's a smart farm. Yeah. And that farm has taught us a lot, has taught very many people. My job is to create a, our job is to create a critical mass of farmers that will be able to support the 9.7 billion people that are expected by 2050. Wow, that's a big number. That's a and that's what number. we are doing. We are about 24 kilometers here from Tumasukma. You can always walk to a farm and learn new things that you can do with yourself. Mm. And that's what we do. We train farmers, we train the youth, we equip them with knowledge. And some of it, most of it actually, we share it freely for them to excel in life. What more can I say about my life? He's it will take a long time to, <laughs> to complete my story, but that is Absolutely. it in a nutshell. Before we uh, try to wind up, say something about your view about the transformation of Africa and what actually is the role of the youth. I definitely realize in the preamble we talked about how hands-on this man is, which is something he just talked about. Very active farm, huge farm, he's been equipping people with all kinds of skills, but very, very hands-on. Where is the youth in your picture? What oh. do you think is their role in Africa's transformation? Um, they have a huge role to play. And, and, and to start off from that is, um, if you look at what data is telling us, you know, by, by 2050, Uganda probably actually will be more than 100 million people. Let's start with home. 100 people, those 100 million people, yeah. those are 100 million mouth to feed. To feed. Uh, more than 100 million people to dress, hmm? to house, okay? Yeah. 
to, to do all the vocational things, you know, electrics, if yeah, I may say, yeah, yeah. water engineering. Hmm? There will be a huge potential in guidance and counseling. You know, as we grow old, as we advance into the information age, there will be a lot of depression yeah. as well. Probably among very many people, different categories of age. And the youth at the middle. You know, the median age in Africa, yeah. here in Uganda, is about maybe 15 years old or 17 years old. I, I, yeah, somewhere I, between... Uh, yeah, somewhere between uh, 15 and 24, that's just about 17, yes. 18 or so. Yes, so we are a huge population of the youth, but my worry is one. I want to start with my worry. It's a huge po population, huge potential, but the quality of the youth that we do have. If we are to thrive in the next 30 years, then the quality of the youth is going to matter. And I think that's where this pro program comes in. I know the CEO, as the CEO director, yeah. has a regional industrial training college, and we must equip the youth. We must strengthen our vocational policy. We must make sure the youth are hands-on. And, 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 and I, I, I usually conflict with parents. They want their yes, it's very good to do an IT degree. Yes, to do economics. But, you know, as you take them there, give them a vocational. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Maybe at S4. There's a long time, maybe in vacation. Mm -hmm. One year. Take them to a driving school. Teach them some mechanical engineering. It is easy. You take them, you pay and, and teach them some, you know, tiling. Yeah. You know, you don't need to know a lot of physics to do to, that. Yeah. And you can invest some money in the youth and equip them that way. Now, if we equip them... Uh, recently, I had, I had a very radical idea. I, I, I was sharing with the members I had on the group mm. uh, some what, WhatsApp space. And I told them, I think it is high time for somebody to drive dictatorship, if that word exists. Yeah to forcing the youth to have a minimum of time that they need to spend at a vocational institute. Probably before you admit them to a degree. To, to, to the university. To the university. Let them have one year and, and, and learn hands-on skill. You know, sieving, you know, you know, you know, you know knitting and, you, you know, bricklaying, yeah. all sorts of things. Then at the end of the day, they will be better people mm. in their old age. Mm. What actually most of the things that I do today mm. is not where I, it's because it's not because I have gone to a big uh, high end school. Mm. It's not because I have learnt a lot. It's what I did at the farm. So we need to equip the youth in that area, and that way we will grow economy. That way, we will have better people. That way, we will have responsible parents. Sure. And, and I think it is, it is my word that let's equip the youth mm. for us to transform society. Mm. Because they are the majority, mm. and that's what they need to do. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Warren. I should add that we need no reminder to see that this gentleman's heart definitely beats for the youth. It's been a huge pleasure as well as a privilege hosting you here, Ndugu Ware. Thank you. And thank you so much for speaking to the masses. We hope to uh, meet next week uh, here on Church of Uganda Family TV, Thursday 8 to 9 p.m. Thank you so much and have a good night.